you mentioned the matter of unfounded hatred and Abraham, it reminded me of a joke. I remember that the sages explained that Abraham and Sarah, they converted people to Judaism. Abraham converted men, Sarah converted the women, and I asked myself, what does it mean to convert? Because things weren't institutionalized back then, there weren't any Jews, there was Abraham and Sarah. So now I understand that they actually taught them how to find the point of unity and connection above all differences, and this reminds me of a joke. This guy, he makes it to a deserted island, he finds a Jew on the island, they walk around, they see two synagogues. He says, what do you need two synagogues for? You're here on your own. He says, here's where I pray, and that place I'll never go there. Meaning that unfounded hatred is something that accompanies us. If we're Jewish, we have unfounded hatred. It's always there, right? True, true. It's a part of being Jewish. There's no one to hate, he hates him. Right. It's spiritual rejection. It's spiritual separation. So can you explain it a bit? It's what? It's a Jewish quality? Is hating a Jewish quality? We didn't come to that yet. Jews all over the world can help each other and so on. We didn't come to that yet. When we'll start connecting between us, then we'll discover that there's unfounded hatred between us. So it's all ahead? What are these rifts between us? Also seems like hatred. It's just a small drop because we're here in the land of Israel and even corporeally wise we have to be somehow mutually connected. So it's revealed just a bit. But when you start revealing unfounded hatred in depth from the corporeal level down, it's as deep as the height of Mount Sinai. I want to specify my question. I think I didn't ask clearly. You're saying in the future, when we will try above all differences and disputes to connect, we'll discover a big mountain of hatred that's in the future to come. We didn't even come close to that. That's not what I want to ask about. Yeah, but we'll have the strength to overcome it and to build love covers all crimes above it. That's something in the future to come, but in order to understand the future, I want to look at the past, because I, I have no grasp of the future, but I can't understand the past. I didn't simply tell you this joke about the Jew. It seems that as if, when you look at history, not so far back, past generations, wherever there are Jews, this thing exists. You can hide it, you can say no, mutual help and so on, but besides the mutual help and the mutual guarantee, there is always, always unfounded hatred. I can say uh, as a person that comes from that public, you can see it in the strongest way in a synagogue. Unfounded hatred resides in any Jewish community. So why? Being a Jew, I mean, it seems that because we're Jews, we have things like we're successful, we're talented, and we hate what it's a part of the package. That's what I want to understand. Yes. Why? Why is it this way? Because our destiny is connection, our goal, the goal of our nation, of our country of our life here in this world is to connect and show it to the rest of the world how to connect. So why did we get the quality of hate? It's the very opposite. No. You said hatred is a Jewish quality in order for you to have what to connect upon. Without the hate, you can't connect. What connection can you have? If I have two things and they're not so far from one another, then I connect between them with a sawing thread. If there's hate between them, I need an iron thread. If there's big hate, I need iron chains. And if it's even greater, I don't know what I have to create here, an entire system that will tie them, bond them together from all sides. You see, the greater the hate, the greater the love because one can't be without the other. And this is why it says love covers for all crimes, only this way. And it's specifically among Jews, and it's not yet unraveling among us. You'll see that when we will come to connection between us, a smaller and bigger and bigger, then we'll understand how could it be that Rabbi Akiva, who taught his 24,000 students, he taught them brotherly love, and they fell into unfounded hatred. And what a hatred! Blazing flames that burned down Jerusalem, that's their hate, which caused this entire exile of the 2,000 years and so on. 
We don't understand the depth of unfounded hatred. So I'm kind of confused. To this day, I thought that to be Jewish, it means to be and love thy neighbor as thyself. Now you say that being Jewish is to discover the hate. Of course, because what can you build love on? Only a top hate. That's how it always is. We were made out of a substance called the will to enjoy, the will to receive pleasure, and therefore the essence of our substance is to enjoy, and pleasure is felt out of a desire, a deficiency, out of a lack, that I lack something. The more I lack something, then ah, I want to drink so much, and I drink. Ah. I couldn't find water for half a day, then you have pleasure. And if I have water next to me all the time and I take a small sip, I don't have pleasure, I just wet my throat. So love, like any other pleasure, but love is the greatest pleasure. It can be felt only in accordance with the deficiency that's prior to it, and the deficiency prior to it is called hate. And if we want to come to utter love against it, there has to be unfounded hatred. What, what is unconditional love and unfounded hatred? Unconditional love meaning boundless love that fills my heart and mind, my entire world, and I feel everyone as one. This can happen if I gradually, bit by bit, discover a horrific hate, a terrible rejection towards everyone. I don't want to be in touch with them unless it's in order to suppress them and to enjoy in the most egoistic way. This is how we advance. And you can't build a connection unless you discover qualities which are against the connection. And these qualities, they live in you more and more, and they're burning, and you see how you hate and disagree, and you can't look at others, really. And if you overcome that, and you ask, for the positive force from nature, the general force of love that exists in nature, it's only hidden if you derive it from there and you balance your force of hatred. That's called love covers for all crimes and then you come to balance. But it's a balance between hate and love where none of them disappear. That's called love covers for all crimes. You only want to cover the crimes, the unfounded hatred, you want to cover it. Otherwise, you won't have unconditional love.